إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين ما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل بدعة ضلالة The best of speech is the book of Allah and the best guidance is the guidance of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst matters are the, those newly innovative things into the faith, into the religion of Islam. And each of that is a misguidance. Allah Ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If you obey most of those on the face of the earth, they will guide you astray from the path of Allah. And there are several warnings in the Quran and in the words of the Messenger against going with norms blindly, conforming to norms blindly. What's normal could be a good thing, so we're not going against norms just for the sake of going against norms. Norms could be a good thing, but at the same time, norms could be harmful, corrupt, evil, dangerous. And the reason there's a warning against conforming to norms blindly is because going against the flow is one of the most difficult things to do. Going against the flow is one of the most difficult things to do. And that's why we said before in pre previous khutbah, Custom and tradition is more powerful than even religion itself. Because religion only impacts those who have the Iman, have the faith, have the willingness to follow and to conform to Allah's guidance in open and in secret. Whereas tradition and custom, because it's so widespread, it's always in our faces. It's very difficult to go against. Because no one likes to be seen as strange. No one likes to be seen as weird. No one likes to be seen as the odd person. And hence the Prophet ﷺ said, Bada al Islam gharibah. Islam started as a strange thing. Wa sayaudu gharibah kama bada. And it will return and become a strange thing once again, just as it began. Because when the Prophet ﷺ came, and was sent by Allah Ta'ala to the people of Mecca. He was sent to people who had their traditions, had their customs, had their cultures, had their families, their tribes, had their ways of living. How easy is it to go against the flow? We mentioned how difficult it is to do so. And yet one person, because of the light of guidance, was able to reform the whole world. Not the city of Mecca, not the Arabian Peninsula, not the eastern part of the world, the whole world, the Prophet ﷺ was able to have such a huge impact on people. And that shows that the companions, despite being brought up according to certain traditions and certain ways and certain lifestyles, when they saw the truth and the beauty of the message that this messenger came with, they were willing to not just accept it, they were willing to sacrifice, sacrifice their lives for it. And as soon as this messenger passed away, they didn't turn on their backs. They were on another mission to spread that message to all the corners of the earth and that's exactly what they did. May Allah Ta'ala be pleased with them. And that shows that they carried a type of responsibility. They felt that they had a duty and a responsibility to ensure that Islam spreads to people. That Islam is something that people are made aware of. 
Isn't it unfair that we believe something is so true, something is so good, so beneficial? It's guidance in this life, success in the next life, and we don't share it with people. That's unfair. It's a type of injustice. Injustice for ourselves and an injustice for others as well. And so, the reason I started by touching upon the issue of Islam being strange and going against the flow being difficult is because today, in particular, we can feel and sense the difficulty of going against norms and going against the flow. And that's because society has turned into one very small universe where everyone can see what everyone else is doing. You can impact other people. You can share your message. You can say your words. I'm speaking here now from in Mitchells in Birmingham. And people in the US might be might know what's going on. People in Australia might know what's going on. People in other parts of the world can hear what I'm saying. What then of people who have a huge following in social media and so on? And so now the online world has its own set of norms that's influencing us and it's very difficult to, to go against. And before talking about the importance of staying firm upon the way of the messengers and the path of Allah Ta'ala, it's at least important to be aware of this reality. That Islam began as something strange and it will return as being something strange. So that at least we have the mental preparation, the psychological awareness and preparation at least to discipline ourselves and keep ourselves upon the path. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our hearts firm upon Iman and firm upon Islam and firm upon the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until we meet him. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِيُوَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على رسول الله وبعد We without sounding pessimistic because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says من قال هلك الناس فهو أهلكم Whoever says the people are destroyed people are just destroyed we're in a time that's destroyed. We're in a time that's no good. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says that, then he's the worst of them. He's the most destroyed of them. <coughs> and in another word, in another wording of the hadith, فَهُوَ أَهْلَكَهُمْ Then he's the one who's responsible for causing them to be ruined with that pessimistic and negative attitude. So we always don't want to go to the extreme, but at the same time we also don't want to hide from from deficiencies in ourselves and our communities, and we don't want to hide from weaknesses in ourselves and our communities. And know that in the early generations of Islam, this is one of the most incredible things really, in the early generations of Islam, the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, the first generations of Islam, they were complaining about Islam becoming strange. They were complaining about Islam becoming strange. Someone said to Abdullah ibn Mubarak, who was born in the second century after Hijrah and passed away uh, in the third. Sorry, no, he, was, he passed away in the second century after Hijrah. Someone said to him, Who now, who is there today who accepts to be given advice? No one accepts advice anymore. This is what he's saying. So Abdullah ibn Barak said, who gives advice? Who today gives advice? <coughs> At that time, they're complaining about one of the most important actions of Islam, which is giving advice. Ad-deen al commanding good, forbidding evil. And so this, it's not strange for us, to say, for us to see today that we are going through challenging times. We're at a stage where it's embarrassing for a person to openly say, I believe in a creator. It's embarrassing for someone to, to say, I believe in the messengers of Allah. And I live my life according to the teachings of the messengers. 
it's strange or difficult for someone to even admit simple facts. Simple facts are difficult to say. It's hard for someone to say, I believe there's a difference between a man and a woman. It's hard for someone to say, I believe that marriage is an important part of society. Isn't that, isn't that a manifestation of the strange times that we live in? Surely that's a manifestation of the strange times that we're living in. And we touched last week and social media requires not just a khutbah, but many sermons and many lectures and many reminders. But like I said in the first khutbah, social media is contributing towards that. Because it's making the world a small little world with certain norms, certain values, certain ideologies. Even if we don't really believe them, we just go with the flow. So that we don't seem strange and we don't seem backwards and we don't seem odd. And so therefore the responsibility of mentioning Islam, talking about the teachings of Islam, becomes even more important. Otherwise those teachings will slowly become strange, even the Muslim will struggle to accept them. Even someone who says, I believe in Allah and I believe in the Messenger, will find it difficult to say and will find it difficult to accept some of the basic and core tenets of the faith. Why? Because it's strange. And that's why Abdul, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, who is sometimes referred to as the fifth Khalifa, and he wasn't actually the fifth Khalifa, but he was one of the rightly guided Khulafa. He said, Islam will only disappear when spreading Islam starts to disappear, when people start to become silent about talking about Islam. So we want to make that part of our lives. We don't have to be scholars to spread Islam. We don't have to be, you know, specialists to spread Islam. We just have to do something in order to ensure that the name of Allah is being mentioned, to make sure that the words of Allah Ta'ala are being recited, to make sure that the teachings of Islam are being spread, to make sure that our families are being brought up knowing Allah, knowing His messengers, knowing his, their guidance. And that's the, the best thing that we can do to face against or to stand up against uh, the norms of our societies and to be firm when it comes to facing and standing up against the norms. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the guidance of the Qur'an and to fill our hearts with knowledge and to make us productive in our lives, people who use their time wisely. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with the Muslims in all the sufferings that they're going through across the world. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Allahumma filana wa rahamna wa afina wa afu anna. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana. Waqina adhaban nar. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah.